Hi guys, and welcome back for another thrilling episode of Dr. Deneza Dispels the Bullshit in the SIBO World. So in today's video, we're gonna discuss whether or not soil-based probiotics like Megaspore are truly the end-all be-all of probiotics if you have SIBO, and if not, why I'm gonna pick this apart a little bit. You can already kind of get a, a little bit of a stab at this. I'm going to suggest that soil-based probiotics are not necessarily what you need to be doing if you have SIBO. They might work, but they might not. But first I want to dispel a little bit of the bullshit because Lord help us, the SIBO world is rife with BS and just plain old falsehoods. And I am going to be throwing some shade on one website, one person in particular, and you know, I, I got nothing. I'm just gonna throw some shade because they are frankly telling people things that are untrue. So here we have an article on Amy Meyer's website Otherwise, a lovely website. Otherwise, a lot of good stuff here. But this article, Why Soil-Based Probiotics Are Best for SIBO, is, in my opinion, incredibly misleading. And honestly, this little checkmark, scientifically based, is just a joke. So let's scroll on to see. There's a couple of points that I really take the most issue with. So she goes through, you know, what is SIBO? What are soil-based probiotics? The autoimmune connection. That's all fine. But then we get to this section right here probiotics adding fuel to the fire. And, you know, she says three-step approach, you need to remove the foods that feed it. Debatable to some degree. I mean, you guys know my stance on low FODMAP in particular. Uh, second, attack the bad bacteria. Don't you love the words that we choose? Attack. I'm so sick of the SIBO war mentality. This idea that we have to attack the SIBO with guerrilla warfare tactics and you need to starve it, you need to beat it, you need to kill it. So that's not what this video is about though. But apparently, secondly, we need to attack the bad bacteria. Debatable. And then here's the part where I start to really cringe. Third, restore the beneficial bacteria with probiotics. Now, here's the thing. There are a lot of bacteria that we simply have not put into capsules yet, and you cannot get them in a probiotic. We could take lactobacilli, we could take bifidobacterium, we could take, you know, bacillus substilis. We cannot take a Fecalobacterium presidentiae probiotic. We cannot take a Roseburia probiotic. We can't take a Eubacterium probiotic. There are just some things that we cannot replace with probiotics, but I digress. She goes on to say, the problem with many probiotics available on the market is that they simply don't work for SIBO. Um, I don't know, man. I pulled probably 10, if not 12 studies for my FODMAP Freedom class. When we get to the last module in FODMAP Freedom, where we talk about probiotics and how to determine which one you should be on, I pulled up at least 10 or 12 studies using probiotics for SIBO, and almost all of them are very, very favorable, including a pretty decent meta-analysis from a year or two ago. So this, that they simply don't work, that right there does not jive with the supposed scientifically based button that they placed on their website. So that's already uh, not truthful, not evidence-based. Many probiotics can actually make the problem worse. I have yet to see a single study that demonstrates that. Now, people might feel worse, right? Like that's not uncommon that you take the wrong probiotic for you and then you feel worse because maybe it's revving up your immune system or it's doing something unexpected to the immune system or the gut or the nervous system. But making the problem worse, she's suggesting that it will make the SIBO worse and make the overgrowth worse, which I have never seen documented in a single study but we digress. Here's why. Your small bowel is not meant to have much bacteria in it. I mean, compared to the colon, yeah. But to be clear, the small intestine is not supposed to be sterile, not even close. It's supposed to have bacteria in it. It's just nowhere near the quantity in the colon. So it's not that we're going for uh, sterility here. It, uh, okay, bacteria, it interferes with digestion and nutrient absorption. Quite the contrary, it helps with digestion and nutrient absorption if you have the right type of bacteria. Some bacteria are necessary for these functions, yes. You want your bacteria levels to be just right to optimize digestion and absorption, sure. When bacteria are present in the small intestine, again, this and the, the little italics that really, weird, I think I just paused myself, sorry. Um, 
this little italics here, when bacteria are present, is making the reader think that bacteria shouldn't be present in the small bowel or that that is a bad thing. That is not true. You are supposed to have bacteria there, just in the right number and in the right quantity. They are often lactobacillus or bifidobacterium species. Not really. I mean, I've looked at a lot of research studies on this where they do aspirates, and they show, yes, there are some lactobacilli and bifidobacterium, but they are hardly, hardly the majority of what is living in the small bowel. Funny enough, a lot of the small bowel tends to be proteobacteria, bacteroidetes, maybe some firmicutes. It really depends on if you're looking at the lumen or the mucus. Um, lactobacilli and bifido make up a very small portion of the ecosystem, no matter what part of the ecosystem you're looking at, small bowel or colon. Um, when bacteria are present, suggesting that's bad, they are often lactobacillus or bifidobacterium. The majority of probiotic supplements contain these species, sure, so using this type of probiotic increases the bacteria in your small intestine and adds fuel to the fire. No, <laughs> just no. I'm going to try to hide how mad this makes me, but no. What they are suggesting here in a roundabout way is that if you take lactobacilli and bifidobacterium, you're going to make SIBO worse because lactobacilli and bifidobacterium are the bacteria that are overgrown in SIBO. That is 1000% false. There have been studies where they use aspirates and they suck the juice out of the small bowel of people with SIBO. And literally I've read, I think all of them now, not a single one of those has demonstrated lactobacilli or bifidobacterium in any notable quantity in patients who have SIBO. This is 100% false. And it makes people scared to use things that could be very therapeutic for them, namely lactobacilli and bifidobacterium. So this just, this boggles my mind. For this reason, I recommend soil-based probiotics instead of the more common probiotic varieties for anyone dealing with SIBO. Again, this whole section just completely flies in the face of this little scientifically based button that they put on their own website. Like, it's not like, you know, PubMed came and like gave her the stamp of approval. Like the people who run this website chose to put this stamp on there because it's good for marketing, point blank. That's all this button is. It's trying to get you to buy into the content and see them as an authority figure. That's all that button is. Clearly, because if anybody had double checked any of this couple of paragraphs, they would see the malarkey in this. The overgrowth in SIBO is not ever, ever lactobacilli or bifidum, number one. If you find a study that indicates that those are the bacteria that are overgrown in SIBO, please God send it to me because I've read almost all of them that I could find and I've never seen it documented even once. Number two, <laughs> this idea that the small bowel is supposed to be practically sterile is just completely false. And the bacteria that overgrown in the small intestine, sometimes that's coming from the colon and it's backtracking up at the colon. So whether or not lactobacilli and bifido are a part of the normal microbiome of the small intestine might not even matter if your SIBO came up from the colon to begin with. And when it says uh, when bacteria are present in the small intestine, they are often lactobacillus and bifido. Again, show me the studies. Give me an aspirate study where this has been shown and I will guarantee you, you cannot find it. Lactobacilli and bifido make up like a percent or 2% or 3% of the microbiome, including in the small intestine. The majority is gonna be things like proteobacteria, bacteroidetes, and perhaps firmicutes if you're looking in the lumen. Otherwise, you're really not gonna see a lot of lactobacilli and bifido. And it's certainly not the majority of what lives in the small intestine. That is preposterous. Marching on. Okay, soil-based probiotics. Um, it's just why, why they recommend it. Um, now, there's some studies with IBS, and that's decent. That's worthy of noting. Um, for autoimmunity, you know, yeah. Um, and she goes into the superstars. Here's what I'll share with the research and kind of a little bit about Megaspore. Now, as you can tell, I have a bottle of Megaspore in my hand because I keep it here in my office. I do stock it. I do like it. The thing is, it's not the be all end all. I use Megaspore much more frequently and I've used soil-based probiotics much more frequently with my patients who have IBD as opposed to people who have IBS or SIBO. 
that's just how it shakes out. And remember, I have my patients try a whole ton of different ones. So I have people go through and try a whole bunch of different lactobacilli and bifido-based probiotics. And then the very last one I have people try out is five or six days worth of Megaspore. I actually have them try it for longer. All the other probiotics, I have them speed date for two days at a time. This one I give a little bit of a longer shot and I work them up more gradually because it can be a little bit of a shell shock to the system. But not very frequent is it that people end up liking Megaspore the best. Usually they feel better symptomatic improvement and they feel like it's more noteworthy when they try one of the products that have lactobacilli and bifidobacteria. And that's what the research supports too. There are actually quite a few studies that suggest that probiotics are good for SIBO and we'll cover that in a future video. But just know that Megaspore and probiotics that are soil-based are not necessarily the end-all be-all. Now let's go back to this page. Uh, here's one research article. So this is 2017, and this was looking at Megaspore specifically. So this was this exact product. Oral, based, uh, oral spore based probiotic supplements were associated with reduced incidence of postprandial dietary endotoxin, triglycerides, and disease risk markers. This was a cool study. They took 75 subjects, and then they looked to see how many of those people had dietary uh, metabolic endotoxemia, that is an increase in LPS, endotoxin after a high fat meal, which they used pizza as a side note, which I think is really funny, thin crust pizza. So out of the 75 people, they found that about 40 people or maybe 36 were so-called responders who demonstrated dietary or metabolic endotoxemia. And then those people were randomized into a placebo group or a megaspore group and they took either two capsules of Megaspore every day for 30 days, or they took two capsules of a uh, placebo, and then they remeasured. And they did show that the Megaspore probiotic decreased endotoxemia, or LPS absorption, uh, by I think it was 42%. Oh yes, 42% reduction in endotoxin after one month of Megaspore use. So that's pretty neat, like that's pretty compelling, I'm not gonna lie, but here's the thing. The conflict of interest statement. The present study was funded in part by a competitive research grant from Microbiome Labs, those are the people who make Megaspore, uh, and the University of North Texas. The University of North Texas team did not receive direct funding, yada yada, but here's the thing. There is a double standard in the natural world, and I've seen it in other areas of clinical practice, but if there was a study conducted by a pharmaceutical company or sponsored by a grant from a pharmaceutical company saying that the medication that they make was favorable or did something cool, all of us in the hippy dippy health arena would go, well, you can't believe that because it was funded by the company that makes the drug, obviously. But then every chiropractor, naturopath, functional medicine doctor, nutritionist, RD, whoever, is willing to see this article and think that Megaspore is like the God's, God's gift to this green earth. We have to take it with a grain of salt. It's a very compelling research study and I don't want to say that it's not a compelling research study and it does make me think that things like Megaspore have a time and a place, but I'm also not going to say that this is the be all end all and that it's this like miracle of a probiotic when we don't necessarily know that. The reality is we don't have quite as much research on this in particular. And from my experience, my SIBO patients and IBS patients don't generally pick Megaspore as their winter probiotic when I have them try it. But the thing is, is that the company that makes Megaspore, they go out to conferences and they are very influential, particularly Kieran, which is not, he's not listed on this for some reason, but he will go and he will talk about this research article like it is the best thing ever. And you know, yeah, but these doctors who are sitting in the audience sit there and they think, oh my God, I have to use this product for everybody who has leaky gut. This is the greatest thing ever. It's like, maybe. It's a useful tool, but it's not the end all be all. Why in the world people think that spore-based probiotics are like the end all be all is beyond me other than Microbiome Labs just has really good marketing. So for, for what it is, this is a really cool study. It, was, it ended up being about, you know, between 30 and 40 people that they used in the um, 
for the supplementation and it is really compelling. I hope that they do further studies on it. But here's the thing too, is like, I'm giving them shit for this, but who else is gonna fund this study other than the company that makes Megaspore? Nobody. Pfizer is not gonna fund this. And there's, it's already difficult enough to get research funding. So of course, the company with a vested interest in selling you a bunch of Megaspore is going to fund a study on Megaspore. And it was very well designed and it was very compelling, the data that they collected. It's just, you have to take it with a grain of salt when it's funded by the company that makes the damn thing. Now, I'll share this. There was this study, which I didn't pull up the full, uh, the full article, but there was a study specifically with SIBO. So I'm trying to fact check Amy Meyer's website and see if this is actually scientifically based. There was one study I was able to find using Bacillus clausii as a treatment for SIBO specifically. It's 2009, so it's a bit old now, but it is out there. And there was a normalization of SIBO breath testing, and I think it was 47% of patients, if I remember correctly. So that's pretty compelling. That's, that's useful to know. Um, this is another article that I'll, I'll put in the link for today, uh, is this 2019 article, and it talks about bacillus strains as human probiotics very cool. Um, and they go through all the different types and some of the different brand names. So that's really neat. Um, but I guess my whole point of this <laughs> is that no, lactobacilli and bifidobacteria probiotics are not dangerous and they will not make your SIBO worse in the sense of like piling bacteria on top of bacteria. That has never been shown to happen. Find a study and send it to me, but I have yet to see a study where that has happened. And I have I have Google Scholar alerts for SIBO on my phone. Like I get the alerts. So no, lactobacilli and bifidobacteria don't make the overgrowth worse. As a matter of fact, most of the studies, all but one, which was a poorly designed study anyway, show that lactobacilli and bifidobacterium can help with the eradication of SIBO. We have one study on one particular soil-based probiotic strain and its use in SIBO, and it was compelling. But again, no more so than lactobacilli and, probio and bifido. I think try a bunch of different things. See what resonates with you. See what sticks. And the idea that lactobacilli and bifidobacteria are causing the SIBO or are part of that overgrowth is utterly preposterous. It is 100% false. And again, if you find a research study that demonstrates this, please send it to me. Because I have looked and I cannot find a single study that backs up what Amy Meyer's website claims. And if somebody from the Amy Myers team wants to talk to me about this, I would love to have a dialogue, but my God, you have to stop putting false things on your dang website. This is one of the biggest gripes that I have in the SIBO world is all of this nonsense talk about probiotics. Now, in future videos, we're gonna talk about the best probiotics for IBS and the best probiotics for SIBO and how those oftentimes overlap. And I will probably make mention of Megaspore and spore-based probiotics again, but just know that you have other options. You are not limited to just this one type of probiotic for the rest of your days. You can do other probiotics. And if you are nervous about, they might make you feel crummy, or if you have tried other probiotics and it did make you feel worse, I encourage you to go back to my other video about probiotic side effects, where I go through the reasons why you might have a side effect to a probiotic. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with piling bacteria on top of bacteria and making the overgrowth of SIBO worse. So until next time, thank you so much for tuning in for this week's episode of Dr. Deneza Dispels the Bullshit in the SIBO World. I hope it offers some clarity and helps make the SIBO journey more smooth and more effective for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.